Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a history lesson. Kind of, in March of 2011, pro-democratic um, teenage protesters were actually arrested and tortured by government, um, <coughs> government forces. Later, peaceful protesters were also killed by, and rounded up and killed by government forces. This was a huge massacre, and this was a nationwide, like, it caused nationwide um, unrest, which caused um, <coughs> people to begin to pick up weapons and actually start to defend themselves against the government, and eventually this led to them um, trying to drive the government forces away, and that's what has resulted in the Civil War today, six years later. So, my affirmative proposition for today is that the U.S. should increase its military commitment in Syria to <coughs> drive out government forces. My claims for you today will be one, Syria's, Syrian civilians really need our help. Syria, the country is in danger even after the war. Uh, our approach so far has produced more harms than benefits. And finally, we have more than enough resources to solve the problem even without direct force. So first of all, <coughs> Syrian civilians need our help. The Syrian government is actually killing its own civilians at an alarmingly high rate. According to the monthly statistical report on victims as of January of this year, 89.7% of civilian deaths in Syria is a, is a result of the Syrian government. Um, not only this, but the government's hurting its people in its own way because naturally being alive during the civil war, you're living in, um, in, a, in a battleground. So this, adults are harmed because they have to live in this, but the kids are really harmed as well because this is the world they're growing up and this is all they know. And <clears throat> according to the US News Center, Four million Syrian children are in need of some sort of educational assistance. Many of them can't even attend school of any sort, so they're looking for any kind of aid that way. So obviously the kids are a big concern. My second claim is that Syria is in danger. Uh, the country is in danger even after the war is, war is ending, um, even if it does end. <clears throat> so the reason being is that we're in, Syria is in a major economic trouble because it's obviously in the civil war, it's spending a lot of money on on <clears throat> war necessities for the government. And it's, this problem's not gonna go away after the war's over. According to Elena Hollandi, um, she wrote an article on the Business Insider, and she says that a BMI, uh, no, BMI research team forecasts that the Syrian economy will contract 3.9% annually from 2016 to 2019. So that's obviously a big problem for the recovery state. Um, they just continue to say that the, they pro do protect the growth in the, in the economy by 2020, which is great, but not really because it, this growth is going to depend heavily on foreign aid from Russia and Iran, which is who they're getting aid from already, which is great for the United States because Russia is our long time best friend. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and obviously the refugee problem, that's, that's a problem for the world, but it's it's really taking its toll on Syria because this smaller population means there's gonna be less people circulating money around, so it's already gonna harm the economy even more. And the, the alarming thing is that 22% of the initial population in Syria is now gone, they, they've left the country, and everyone there obviously is falling farther and farther into poverty due to the civil war, so they're falling farther away from ever recovery. Now my third claim is that the uh, the U.S. approach so far has produced way more um, harmful effects than any than real benefits. And the first major one is that the U.S. is really killing civilians, which is, this happened a, couple, uh, a few years ago in the news. <coughs> According to Amnesty International, in uh, October 26th of 2016, the, <clears throat> there was 11 U.S. attacks, airstrike, air, airstrike attacks, and um, they killed a total of 300 civilians with just United States forces. And the real problem with this is that um, this is like the approach itself is a problem because the article continues to say that the forces failed to take adequate precautions to minimize harm to civilians. The key word there is minimize. So they know no matter what, they're gonna do, be doing some damage to civilians or civilian properties, but they just didn't take enough caution to actually keep them from being killed. But they, they know no matter what, something's gonna happen to these civilians. So no matter what we do, there's some sort of harm with this approach. Um, <clears throat> another big issue is money, and the problem with that is the United States really hasn't spent all that much money on Syria in perspective. Uh, according to Ponce Rush, 
um, less than 1% of the $4 trillion federal budget, that's just a budget in general for the United States, less than 1% has been spent on foreign aid in general. So <clears throat> to put this more specifically to Syria, um, according to the U.S. Agency for International Development, $6 billion have been spent on Syria since 2011. That's in total. And this is still 1.5% of the total budget for foreign aid. So really, people are complaining about money. There's not really a money issue. That's 1.5% going to going to Syria. If anything, uh, the United States is really wasting money with our approach. Uh, according <coughs> to Paul McLeary in an article on foreign policy, um, the US, uh, in 2015, the US um, spent $500 million on a training program to train a total of 5,000 rebels, um, <clears throat> but there were a lot of things that uh, offset this training, uh, such as attacks by other groups, and it produced only about five trained fighters, which is a huge problem. You wasted $500 million to produce five fighters when the U.S. had plenty of soldiers that you could have sent in if they wanted to go a direct approach. Uh, and finally, the U.S. has resources to help, even if it's not direct involvement. Uh, as according to the Department of Defense, the budget for 2017 was $582.7 billion for the specific um, issue of foreign aid. And again, this is 1.5% of the total budget. <clears throat> so that's not a problem. So, and um, th this can go to anything. This kind of money can go to anything such as humanitarian aid, like food, shelter, anything like that, and it's not like we don't have the means to do it. The United States has uh, 464,000 active duty soldiers just in the army, and so they don't have to even be in combat. All they really have to do is just try to provide any sort of aid to civilians, and that's the problem that we're being restricted to.